In the last video, I showed you my process for developing a wiring diagram from scratch. And once you have all of the different connections, it is super important that you calculate the right wire sizes and the right plug sizes. That is important because otherwise you might set your whole bike on fire. If a wire is too small for the current that needs to flow through it, it will get hot and might start to burn. So to prevent that, let's quickly talk about how you can determine the right wire and plug sizes for each of the parts on your bike. And if you want to understand this topic on a deeper, more theoretical level, then you can research Ohm's law. I want to keep this video as easily understandable as possible, so I'm going to keep it simple and just show you how you can apply it to get the results that you need. I want to show you everything on two examples, the headlight and the indicator. And the headlight on the BMW that I use has three functions low beam, high beam, and the pilot light. And the first thing that we need to do is research the wattage for each of the different functions. For the low beam, it's 55 watts. For the high beam, it's 60 watts. And for the pilot light, it's five watts. Most often you can find those information online or you have to contact the manufacturer. And once you have that, the next thing that we need to know is whether you have a 12 volt system or a six volt system on your motorcycle. Most modern motorcycles and also the BMW have a 12 volt system, but I'm also gonna show you how you can calculate everything for a six volt system. So let's draw a very simple circuit with a 12 volt battery. We have the 12 volt battery right here, positive, negative. And then we have the positive lead going to the headlight and the ground wire running back to the negative terminal of the battery. Let's say we want to first determine the wire size for the high beam. That is 60 watts. Now with these two numbers, we can calculate the amps that need to run through the wires, and that is what in the end determines the wire size. To calculate the amps, according to Ohm's law, we need to divide the watts by the volts. So in this case, that is 60 watts divided by 12 volts, and that is five amps. So we need wires that can at least carry five amps, and the absolute best table that I found to now determine the right wire size is made by Revival Cycles. I'm gonna link it down below for you so you can easily reference it. If we go in the top row, we can select the column that says five amps, and if we then follow that column down, it tells us how big the wire has to be depending on the length of the connection. So let's say the connection was only 2.9 feet long. You could go as low as 22 AWG. That's equivalent to 0.35 square millimeter wire. That is tiny. And I would always advise to leave a very healthy margin when you calculate the wire sizes, especially for things like the headlight and stuff like that. I actually chose 1.5 square millimeter wire for all of the headlight wires because I didn't really want to deal with something that is called voltage drop. And voltage drop just roughly without getting too technical basically means that with all of the pieces that you add to the circuit, the resistance increases and that results in that you have 12 volts at the battery, but when that actually arrives at the load, like the headlight, for example, that might be, I don't know, let's just say hypothetically 11 volts. So then our calculation wouldn't be 60 divided by 12, but it would be 60 watts divided by 11 volts, and that is 5.5 amps. So you see that voltage drop can actually mean that you need a bigger wire. That's why it's always safe to add a little margin. But you also don't need to go overboard because on a motorcycle, the wire length aren't super long. I think the longest wire that I cut was like a meter, maybe. And also you don't have a lot of connections in between the different parts. So don't worry about voltage drop too much just add a little bit to your wire size and you're always good to go. So now let's quickly have a look at the six volt system. It's basically the same calculation. We again have the battery with the positive and the negative terminal, but this time it's a six volt battery, positive lead to the headlight, and then the ground wire, the headlight has 60 watts. Now our calculation is 60 divided by six, which is 10 amps. So you see in the six volt system, you definitely need bigger wires. And that is why it's so important that you know how you calculate the right wire sizes and not just go off other people who might have like a 12 volt system, but you have a six volt system. And then you always have wires that will be too small. Now going back to the 12 volt system, I quickly want to show you since we have three functions in the headlight, how you can do the other two. We have the 12 volt battery, positive lead, headlight, ground wire, and let's say we want to calculate the low beam, that would be 55 watts, and then you do 
55 divided by 12. Or if you have the pilot light, that would be 5 watts, then you would do 5 divided by 12. And then you know exactly like your amps. With that equation and the table from Revival Cycles, you now know how you can determine the wire size for your parts. And the wire size for the positive lead and the ground wire should always be the same. Now, before we look at the plugs, let's quickly talk about how it works if you want to join two wires or if you want to splice into wire. And for joining two wires, let's take the three in one indicators of the BMW as an example, because there we have two rear lights. Let's say we have one rear light here and one rear light there. And let's assume hypothetically they both have 12 watts. To reduce the wiring, I actually joined the two leads into one that then ran back to the M unit. And here the calculation would be 12 watts divided by 12 volts equals one amp. And it's the same for the other side. So here we also have one amp. So this part until here, this wire, and also this wire, they each need to be able to carry one amp. But from here, back to the M unit, it needs to be able to carry two amps because this has to be able to carry the amps for both of the rear lights. And that is why we need a bigger wire in this area. And we could choose a smaller wire in those areas, but you can obviously just go with a bigger wire all around. You can always go bigger, but you should never go smaller. So that's how you calculate the wire size when you want to join two wires. Now let's see how it works if you want to splice into wire. And if you want to splice into wire, that basically just means that you have a wire going from A to B, and then you also want that signal to go to C. On the BMW, for example, I had to splice into the high beam wire to also get that signal to the speedometer. So whenever the high beam is activated, I also get the little blue control light in the speedometer to light up. In our simple drawing, that looks like this. We have the 12 volt battery, positive terminal, negative terminal. Let's say we have the high beam bulb right here and the control light right there. So now I ran the positive wire to the high beam bulb and then I also tapped into that lead and ran a wire to the control light. And then for ground, we also need a ground connection from the headlight to the negative terminal on the battery and also from the control light to the negative terminal on the battery. And this right here is called a splice where you tap into a different wire. But now it gets interesting. We already know that the 60 watts in the 12 volt system draw five amps. And then let's say the control light has 12 watts. This is way too much for a little control light, but just for ease of use. Then we have 12 divided by 12 equals one amp on this part of the wire. So now with those two numbers, we know that this part of the wire requires six amps, five plus one. So that one requires six, this part requires five, and this part of the connection requires to carry one amp. So you don't need to use the same wire size for the control light than for the high beam, even though you tap into the high beam wire. To give you a very, very simplified answer to why this is like this, and why you don't need a bigger wire that goes to the control light, is because each of the parts basically pulls the current that it needs. So the high beam bulb pulls the five amps, but doesn't push anything more into this wire. Here, it's just the control light that pulls the one amp. That is why you can choose different wire sizes for all of these three connection parts. Now with that, you should be able to calculate all of the different wire sizes for your wiring diagram, but you have to keep one thing in mind. The wire size is not the outer diameter of the wire. It is the cross section of the wire, and that is a little bit hard to measure. So I'm going to link you a calculator down below that basically transforms outer diameter into a cross section. But what I found works the easiest is if you get all new wires, then just measure the outer diameter for each of the different sizes with the insulation and then just mark that on the packaging. And then you can always reference the cross section by just measuring the outer diameter. But keep in mind that different types and qualities of wires can have slightly different outer diameters, but the same cross section. Now that we're done with the wires, let's move over to the plugs and let's make up a hypothetical headlight that has a 60 watts low beam and a 120 watts high beam. So we have the 12 volts battery right here positive, negative, and then we're gonna add a plug in the middle, but first let me draw in the high beam and low beam in one bulb basically. 120 watts for the high beam and 60 watts for the low beam this time. So now we have two wires 
for the two functions and here we're going to add a plug. So for the 60 watts we already know this one draws 5 amps and the 120 watts this one is 10 amps. So now for the plug, the question is, do we need a 5 amp, 10 amp or 15 amp plug? And the answer to that question is that for all of the plugs that I know at least, the rating is always for each of the trim connectors. So it doesn't matter if you have a two pole connector or a six pole connector, each of the wires can, let's say it's rated to 10 amps, each of the wires can carry 10 amps. Let's take the Deutsch pin connectors that I got from Jay already as a quick example. The smaller version, the DTM series, is rated to up to 7.5 amps, and the bigger series, the DT series, is rated to up to 13 amps. So for this connection right here, I can't choose the DTM series if I want to have both of the wires in the same connector. I would have to choose the DT series, and that would also be good because it would give me a very healthy margin which is also important when choosing the right plugs and when it comes to buying wires and plugs you obviously have to make sure that you actually get high quality stuff where it can be sure that they are actually capable of carrying the load that they are rated to if you want to know all of the parts and tools and supplies that i use to wire up the bmw then check out this video right here i hope what we talked about today helps you to confidently determine the right wire sizes for all of your parts it's definitely a much better feeling than just winging it. If you have any more questions, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.